Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to look into today is the strange disappearance of Cherry Mahon, who literally disappeared right down the hill from her own house. If you guys have any suggestions that you'd like me to look into, please let me know. Of course, I'll look into them for you. Cherry Ann Mahan was born on the 14th of August in 1976 to her mother Janice in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. She also had a younger brother. We don't actually know the father's name and it would later come out that Janice would confess that Cherry was a result of a sexual assault. So a man that sexually assaulted her that had gotten her pregnant with Cherry and obviously she absolutely adored Cherry. She loved her daughter to pieces but it was just unfortunate circumstances like where she came from that didn't matter because she got cherry out of it and you know it was an awful thing that happened to her but she ended up with this beautiful daughter that she adored out of it she was always with her mother they were so so, so close they had a really good relationship they were always together and they just absolutely adored each other they also lived with she ended up having a stepfather who they lived with called Leroy McKinney Janice actually met Leroy not long after she had given birth to Cherry and he's been there ever since, you know, he absolutely adored her, he took her in as her own and raised Cherry as his daughter. They decided at some point to move away from where Cherry was born and they moved to Cornplanter Road in Butler County and that is where Cherry would attend elementary school called Winfield Elementary School and she absolutely loved it there. Cherry was described as being a very happy girl, a very bright girl. She had tons of friends, you know, her family was so happy together, they all got on really well, there were, you know, no arguments, no nothing like that. She was very social, social and she loved hanging out with her friends. And they had lived in this area now about seven months, which they did choose at the time because they felt like it was such a safe area to live in, you know, there was not that much crime there and it was where they cho chose to raise their family as a result of that. This would all change though on the 22nd of February in 1985, unfortunately. And the plans for that day was when she finished school, Janice was gonna take her for this play date with one of her friends. So Cherry goes to school and she's super excited about finishing because obviously she's gonna go and see a friend and play around their house for a while. And so she's super excited all day. And then when school finishes, she gets on the school bus home like she has every other day. And normally she would meet her mother at the bus stop. So their house was just up the hill. This bus stop was at the bottom of the hill. Normally Janice would come down the hill and meet Cherry and then they would go home together. This day in particular, Janice was hadn't been in work that day and she decided that she wasn't going to go to the bus stop, that Cherry would be fine walking up the hill and you know, you would think that literally just walking up that hill down from the bus stop that she would be fine so at about 10 past 4 in the afternoon they hear the bus arrive at the bus stop and stop to let the children off that were getting off there Leroy waited at the porch you know to see Cherry's head pop up and come over that hill but she never did now Cherry was on that bus and she did get off the bus at 4 10 pm when it arrived she got off with a few friends, the, fr the friends' mothers were waiting in the cars for them and so they all walk over to their mother's cars and the parents and her friends see Cherry adjust her strap before she begins the journey up the hill to her own house. She was seen walking past a blue or a greenish van that was parked near the bus stop. It was about 150 yards away from her house to walk so you know it wouldn't have taken her that long to to walk that distance later on the children were were questioned on the bus and they said the same thing they saw cherry get off they saw her walk past this vehicle which obviously i'll get into more detail later on but that they may have actually seen this vehicle following the bus obviously that's what they said but i can't confirm fully that it was you know that vehicle that it was the same vehicle as the one that were parked there because they're children and you know it might have looked similar but not being the exact same or it could have been, you know, I'm not saying either way, I'm just saying that it can't really be confirmed. As I said, Leroy was waiting for her and he didn't expect it to take long for Cherry to get up that hill. And then of course she would be in his line of sight. So after waiting 10 minutes and not seeing her, he got worried and he began making his way down the hill. I say worried, he wasn't panicking in that sense because 
he just figured that she had stopped off talking to someone or she'd gotten distracted or something. In situations like that, you wouldn't ever think that she would have been taken from that bus stop just down the road. And so they just assumed that she'd been held up. Heck, even that she's fallen over and maybe hurt herself or something, something was holding her up, but that she was on that road and in that bus stop. Janice joined and they began walking down over to the line of sight of the bus stop but they didn't see Cherry anywhere. She wasn't up the hill, she wasn't down the hill, she wasn't near the stop, she was just nowhere. They called the police immediately and I believe within an hour the police were there and they were looking for Cherry. They did everything they could. They brought in sniffer dogs, they brought in helicopters, they needed to find this little girl as soon as possible. They were going around doing door-to-door -door inquiries, seeing if anyone had seen or heard anything. And just generally, the more people that found out about Cherry going missing, the more people joined and helped with the search. They were all out there looking for her. Within just hours of her going missing, there were hundreds and hundreds of volunteers out there looking for her, which is so heartwarming that everyone can come together in such tragic circumstances, of course, but they're all out there, they want to find her. Apparently, I've seen as well that there was still snow heading, like, bits of snow on the street and in the driveway and things like that, and they were even looking into that to see whether they could see any footprints or just literally anything. But there was just nothing. Cherry was last seen wearing a grey coat, a blue denim skirt, a white leotard and blue leg warmers with beige boots. She also had cabbage patch earmuffs. As the police were investigating, they managed to get the description of the car van I mentioned earlier. It was described as being a 1970s-ish Dodge with a mural painted on the side of a skier sliding down a snow-capped mountain. The last time Cherry was seen was making her way up that hill. And police do believe that once she walked around that corner and obviously the people in the area could not see her, that she didn't walk for very long before she was either got willingly into a car with someone or was taken. Despite numerous police appeals and media appeals and the public, you know, reaching out to them, nobody had seen Cherry apart from the last time when she was going up that hill. Nobody had seen her since. Regardless, people in the community all wanted to help, you know, they pulled together all their resources to try and do everything they could. They managed to raise $39,000 for her safe return or any information leading to that and a local business also gave a further $10,000 for information leading to an arrest or conviction of the people, person or people involved in her abduction. They also put up missing persons posters, you know, just doing everything they could to try and raise awareness of this little girl that had gone missing. The police didn't really think that she'd been taken for a ransom, so they didn't... There was no phone calls or anything like that. Normally with a ransom you get a no, you get a phone call or whatever, but there was nothing like that. And then they started to suspect that maybe Cherry knew the person or people that actually took her. It didn't take very long for the police to rule out her family, and they just didn't believe that it was anyone from the family. And a lot of times... So yeah, you do have like a stranger child abduction and things like that, but a lot of times it is unfortunately members of the family or people that actually know them. Police, you know, they put out appeal after appeal for information, especially around the van. Obviously, not a lot of vans have that logo or picture on the side of it. And over, as the years passed by, you know, tips and things came in. This van has yet to be found and Cherry has also yet to be found. In 1998, Cherry, Cherry's mother Janice put forward a petition to try and have her legally declared as deceased, which did go through. So Cherry has been legally declared as deceased, but her mother will never ever give up hope on her. She still hopes and prays that she is still out there somewhere. She continues to hope that one day she will get answers. I've also seen that over the years, tips and leads and things have come through. They all look really promising at one point, but then they were just ruled out. And it just seems like you find a lot of that in this case. A lot of, oh, maybe it's that, and then, oh no, it's not that. And it's just... It's just madness. They got life insurance on Cherry and I believe that they actually donated that to the National Centre for Missing or Exploited Children. And they just tried to use that money to help other kids like Cherry that were missing and nobody knows what happened to them. I believe as well that Cherry was involved in a car accident at one point and she got this settlement of money and they put that in a trust fund for her younger brother. Over the years, age progression pictures have been done of Cherry. And obviously that is in the hope that somebody might recognise her as she's getting older. Maybe somebody will think, well, I know her and obviously call with some information. 
She also said to have this scar on her left arm from when she was bitten by a dog. So please, please, if you know anything about Cherry or you feel like you might recognize her or know her now, then please do call the relevant authorities. She has been legally declared as deceased. Whether she is possibly still out there, it is possible. You know, we don't know. A lot of people do have their children declared as deceased legally, you know, years and years after they have gone missing. And it's just something that they do. It doesn't necessarily mean that she is no longer alive. Maybe maybe somebody took her and much like JC Dugard and things like that, you know, they keep them and raise them as their own and brainwash them and things like that. So who knows? You know, who knows what happened to Cherry? Who knows whether she is still alive or not? And this case is totally heartbreaking because she literally goes missing from down the road. Like her mum was always there at that bus stop to meet her. And the one day she was not there, Cherry goes missing. I can't even imagine how horrific that is. And I know that she feels a lot of guilt for that. She was minutes away from her daughter and she just was snatched or something. I don't even know what happened to her. It's just beyond horrific. Like it's something you would never ever want to think about. And oh, it's just so painful. I really do hope one day that we find out what happened to Cherry. You know, for her family's sake, they really, really need to find closure on this and find out what happened to their little girl. But yeah, that is the end of the case. If you have enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Cherry Mayhem. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.